How do you know something is over? How do you learn to let it go? How do you know that God has a plan for you through this pain? When something comes to an end, there is no giving a beginning to it again. You might try twice as hard, but nothing will make it better. See, Jenna had a relationship that lasted for eight solid years. And one day her partner said he wanted to make some vital changes, which meant him taking out some trash to give way for refreshing things and he told her that she had to let him be. It sounded like a joke, but it was in April 1st. This ain't no April Fools. She wondered how something that felt so real and so true could just end like that. She called friends for intervention to see if a partner would reconsider, but he didn't. One of those friends, one of these friends then told her something that changed her life, and I hope it changes yours too. This friend said that when the year comes to an end, we know it is over. There is no going back. No matter how much we enjoyed that year, it doesn't make it repeat itself. What is over, is over. But hope remains to tell you that better new years will come. Darling, see my dear, your new and better times are coming. But for now, accept reality that it is over. So say to yourself, it is over. What we had, is over. Then let go. Because you can never let go if you don't believe that it is over. Not all torn clothes must be mended. Because the more you try to repair some broken relationships, the more you increase the tear. Some relationships are worn out and are only meant to be thrown away. But we most times don't realize it. A lecturer who holds a position in a certain woman's affair once said that they have stopped forcing couples to make up after a breakup. Instead, they allow them to decide whether to return back to each other or not because they as an organization they have noticed that couples who struggle in vain to stay with each other sometimes end up committing murder but you can't force people to love you and god has already taught you that he doesn't compel humans to worship him he only tells them what they ought to do if you tell someone I need more than what you're giving me and they mock you, darling, don't get it twisted. They don't deserve you. People give excuses that people can't give what they don't have. That is to say that if you come from an unloved home, you can't give love. But you see, Jesus has changed that narrative. Didn't people dislike Jesus? Didn't his own family reject him? Didn't his own companion betray him? But still, did all these change him? No. He remained tender and compassionate. A motivational speaker once said that she was a very, very bitter woman. But she realized later on that this was having a toll on her family. And so she let God change her. So don't sit there and listen to people make excuses for what they have purposely refused to change. So accept and accept the fact that it is over and let go. Your life is in a box where people should come and dump the flimsy excuses. And now that you know all these, knowledge is key. Open the door. Go in and pick all the treasures the devil has stolen from you. He made you believe that. What couldn't be, could be. And now you have toiled in vain, losing your joy, your sanity. So I want you to receive this knowledge and free yourself. Pick up your happiness. Pick up your sanity. Choose God and let them go. You see, God has a plan. Letting go would be of no essence if God didn't have a plan for you. It's just like quitting a job out of frustration, yet not having a standby job. Just think about it. How are you going to pay your bills? When God has shown you signs that it is over with someone and you should let go, it means that he has better plans for you. Believe that. Joel Austin says that sometimes what we think is a disappointment is really God getting us into a position to go a new level. According to Minnie Pearl, God has a plan for us all, but he expects us to do our share of the work. It isn't God who will automatically remove you from a toxic relationship. No, he doesn't do that. He just tells you what he wants you to do and gives you the liberty to do as you please. 
So do God's will so that you can see the manifestation of His glory in your life. From the beginning of creation as recorded in Genesis chapter 1, God's plans has always been good. When He made light out of the dark, He said it was good. Every single thing He made, He confirmed that it was good. And your story will be good as well. And you should know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. For those who are called according to His purpose. That's what the Bible says in Romans chapter 8, verse 28. So can you see that purpose and plan work hand in hand? We can believe in purposeless lives, yet expecting God to have a plan for us. It doesn't work that way. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 19, verse 21, that many had plans in the mind of a man, but it is the purpose of the Lord that will stand. So we can go on planning our lives for years, but Psalm chapter 127, verse 1, it reminds us that unless the Lord builds the house, the builders labor in vain. And unless the Lord watches over the city, the watchmen stand guard in vain. In vain you rise early and stay up late, toiling for food to eat. It is only God's plan for you that truly bears fruit. And these fruits, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, are the type that no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the heart of man imagined. And these our God has prepared for those who love Him. Hallelujah. And this is intriguing to know that the plan of God, that the plan that God has for you is unimaginable. So just wait for it. Don't be worried, okay? The Bible says in Matthew chapter 6, verse 27, that we should not be worried. And because I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion until the day of Jesus Christ. Amen.